I uh, had to check if a cow was pregnant one year because cows are so big. You have to wear a whole glove on your arm. With the ultrasound in your hand, you gotta go in through the butt and look for the baby. And um, turns out it was a male cow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's my joke right there. I tell that every time. Um, and, so you like uh, you like adopted by a Taiwanese much. Aborigines tribe. Yeah. Today's guest is a very very special TV show star slash actor slash model slash everything else in the entertainment industry here in Taiwan. Justin, who are you according to yourself, and what brought you to Taiwan? Who am I according to myself? I think about that quite a lot. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a guy from York, South Carolina, country bumpkin. Um, oh, a country boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up with no neighbors in the middle of woods. The, I think our closest neighbor, yeah, you could probably walk to him in about five minutes. We have to climb over a, uh, a barbed wire fence. Well, it's electric now, so now you got to be careful. So how did you manage to then like climb over the fence and then find yourself in Taiwan? There's like a lot of fences in between, it sounds. My first girlfriend in high school, she was Japanese. Uh, I signed up for this university in South Carolina because they said they had a Japanese class. Paid my money, choose my classes. They're like, I can't find Japanese. I, I asked one of the, the, the teachers, I was like, hey, you know, what's up with the Japanese class? I was told there's Japanese here. I paid a lot of money. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, he went back to Japan this year. I was like, okay, so now what? I'm not going to get my money back. And they're like, uh, why don't you try Chinese? And I was like, shh. All right, I same, guess. Same. Yeah, it's, it's same, <laughs> but different. Yeah, I was like, you know, they got the same characters and stuff. I'll, I'll try it out. And I did a year and I, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, this is pretty fun. Going into second year of university, we had the opportunity to go study abroad. I thought, like, hey, well, we got this course in uh, Shanghai. You ought to try it out and look it up. Took the brochure, went back, typed in the URL. The URL was broken. I was like, hey, this, this isn't working. I was like, oh, that's that's from five years ago. Let me give you something new. And they gave me this uh, Ming Chuan Da Xu, Taiwan. And I was like, oh, okay, let me go try it out. I, I remember I was at the cafeteria in university and I was sitting down with a Taiwanese and a Chinese exchange student. And they asked me, have you made up your mind yet? Where are you going? And I was like, man, I, I don't know. I just, I really wish there was a place in between China and Japan that had both cultures. And they're like, Bai Ci Chu Taiwan. And that was that. I just you know, saved up money and uh, I worked my ass off, saved up money and I came over. What was like the, the biggest like eye opener to like, wow, this is not how we do things in South Carolina. <laughs> So I studied in Mingchuan, so my first day, they threw me in the middle of Shirley Night Market. And that was, everything was like, what the f*** is that? What the f*** is that? What the f*** is that? What is that? What is that? And you know, I didn't know where to walk because, you know, you walk on the sidewalks, there's a motorcycle. You walk on the road, there's a motorcycle. You walk in the alleyway. Is this a road or a sidewalk? <laughs> there goes the motorcycle. I guess it's both. Go to a restaurant and I see this guy, you know, he's eating his stuff, but his, his, his mouth is just red, completely red. And the teacher's like, hey, what do you want to eat? And I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is, Whatever that I don't is, want it. I don't want it. And I thought like, <coughs> what's going on here? Like everyone's bleeding from the mouth. What is, is it something they're eating? Or is it something they're doing? Do they not brush their teeth? And I was like, nah, people got nice teeth and stuff. But why is he bleeding from the mouth? So about half a year later, I asked my teacher, I was like, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's beetle nut. I was like, oh, whew. So that, that opened up a lot of stuff for me to eat. So you came here and then like originally you were supposed to be here for just like one year, one year, one year. I, I, I literally started having dreams about going back and it, it was nice. It was peaceful in the dream. But I remember touching down, you know, getting out of the airplane and there's just empty green fields everywhere in my dream. And I was like, this is, this, this is, is home. nice, this but is it, home. <laughs> it's home and it's nice, but it sucks. <laughs> there's just emptiness. There's like, I don't, I don't have any plans for a future there. And I have no idea what I'm going to do when I go back. I thought Taiwanese were superstitious and I, I called up my, my Kung Fu teacher and I was like, Hey, I had this dream, blah, blah, blah. You can help me out. And he's like, I, I don't, I don't read dreams. <laughs> He's like, uh, just make up, make up your mind, man. I was like, all right, all right. So that summer I went back and I just, I just signed up for transfer and I, I got in and I just came back, continued at Ming Chuan. Wow. So then so, you, you yeah. graduated here as well, then like university? Graduated, yeah. So after graduation, how did your future look like at graduation here in Taiwan? 
it was a 50-50 chance for me. So uh, in university, back then, it was really hard to get a work permit in Taiwan. Universities, you can get like a, uh, a work permit part-time. Mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to go on a TV show. There's like a classmate, random classmate came up. Hey, you want to go on TV? And I was like, all right. Tried it out first time. And I was like, oh man, I, I got... The first time, as soon as I finished, I remember getting to the taxi and like I, I had to get M&Ms and orange juice and just chug them both. And like, I was about to pass out. I was so nervous. Wow. I was about to puke in the, the taxi. And I was like you know, laying in the back, like, oh, I gotta go home. And uh, it just became more and more fun. And then... I was about to graduate and the law still hadn't changed then. So I, uh, yin bi, I prolonged my graduation for another two years. Just so you could like work part time. Yeah, just so I could do like, uh, yin yi chen, just so I could do the, this, you know, TV and stuff. And I, I remember the teacher coming up to me and she's like, hey, you know, you're gonna pass my class. No, 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 I don't want to yeah, pass. Exactly. I don't wanna... No, 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 no. She's like, <laughs> she's like, if you come here tomorrow, you take the test, you will pass. And I, so I was like, yo, I want to make sure, I was like, okay, let me, let me get this straight. If I come here tomorrow and take this test, I will pass. She's like, yeah. So I didn't show up the next day. Didn't take the test. Retook her class, you know, another year. Then I think I, I purposely failed PE just to, just to continue. It was the easiest, you know, PE, come on, just go there and you sleep on the sidelines and you, know, you hit a volleyball and, and then what? as soon as I was going to graduate, Taiwan changed the law. So the, the TV shows was literally like, even before you graduated, that's like what you were doing yeah. at that time. That's why I, I signed up for the, the part-time permit and I was doing doing dramas every now and then, uh, going on some TV shows. And um, half halfway through, um, I think one of my last two years, the Erfen Zi Chang, that mm. TV show started. And uh, I, I'd done like a movie and stuff previous to that, but it, it was just, it was hit and miss with a lot of jobs. And then that one came on is, you know, all the foreigners, you, know, mm, you go up, yeah. you talk about your country's differences and stuff. And that, that really hit. Every single time I, I see you on like social media, it's always like TV show related. So I, I haven't really pictured you as, as a real human that exists outside of the TV shows, you know? And that, that's partly my fault. I mean, I, I, I hate social media. <laughs> I'll let you know right now. I hate social media. You know this is going up on YouTube, right? I know. Yeah. I know. That's fine. That's fine. The one exception you, for the year. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I am very bad at posting photos and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my fault. I need to I need to be more active in the, the media. How is it like, can you like go outside without every single one? Just like, hey, Justin, yeah. I know you from insert like TV show slash movie slash yeah. anything here. Yeah, I can, I can go outside. Um, one year I was, I was going across the street and sitting and someone walks up and says, hey, Justin from the TV show. I was like, hey, how you doing? And she's just like, where's Fabio? <laughs> I was like... It was another funny one because um, I, I was doing a, a travel show called Qing Wen Jin Wan Zhu Sei Jia. And while doing it, we, we uh, some lady comes up. She's like, hey, I know you. I know you're here filming, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, you see Wu Feng. Wu Feng. And I, I got this. I was long hair then. And I was like, that's like two worlds apart, man. Wu Feng. I got hair. I'm like, yeah, OK, whatever. I'm Wu Feng. <laughs> and she's like, what are, what are you filming? And I, I said, huh? And she's like, <laughs> ah, I was like, uh, TV show, we're doing a TV show. <laughs> You're doing a lot with the, the Aboriginals and they're also like a, is it a Hakka TV show or something? Or yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready for a Hakka TV show. That's like, yeah. how, do, how do you get into that? Going on third year in university here, we have to do internship. So I did mine at uh, ORTV. It's like an English teaching TV show uh, station, TV station, radio station here in Taiwan. They they sent us up to Ulai. In Ulai, there's a lot of uh, Taiyazu. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is pretty interesting. This, I, I like, you know, this is different from the Taiwan that I know. You know, I'd, I'd been here in Taiwan two years, two, three years, and I didn't know Taiwan had Aborigines. That time, I thought the Aborigines were the people who speak Taiwanese. And I uh, went, checked it out, and I was like, wow, this is, I've never seen this in Taiwan. And then I uh, told the boss, I was like, hey, that was really fun. And she's like, hey, well, we got this another event coming up in another Taiyazu tribe somewhere in Shinzu. If you want to go and help out. And I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Went, liked it, had a great time, learned a little bit of the Taiyazu language. You know, it was fun. And then um, I came back. The security guard at the university, he's from, he's the Amis. 
started hanging out with him and I was going to like karaoke bars with all these Aborigines, going to their little events and stuff. At, at one event, I met Uni Aro culture group. So they dance, they sing, and they have performances and stuff. And it's all Amis people. And they've they've actually taken me as their gan gan Yeah, they, they treat me as family. And from there, I met my my Gaga, Amezu Gaga. He's in a tribe in Taidong. Started going back there. The first year I was there, you know, no one knew me. They called me that that American. What they call they call Americans Pataka. Pataka is corn. Okay. You mean. Okay. And because I guess back in the day, Taiwan got a lot of corn. Uh, imports from from the U.S. and I uh, started going, you know, every year. And then they're like, "Hey, what's your age?" Told them my age. I'm like, all right, this is your tongshu. They put me in that age group, and you go up in the ranks together as your age goes. But I, I'm already in the tribe. I'm in, you know, I got my classmates, my family, and and so you uh, like you like adopted by a pretty Taiwanese much. Aborigines tribe. Yeah, like yesterday, I went to the funeral of a, a chieftain. Like I was expected to be there, you know. I was like, "Well, let's go." It was pretty wow. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These, these, this is the things we do not get to see on your Instagram because you don't like. I don't post. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had no idea. I thought like, because you, you don't know. Like based on on the research I tried to do, I'm like, okay, this is for the TV show. He doesn't really care as much. I'm all in, and that's the thing. When I go there and we do these events, we do the dances and you know the singing and stuff. We're wearing the traditional clothing, and you know, and you got to help prepare this and stuff, and, and I'm just not documenting it, and just just going about my life. Wow. Yeah. My my next question was, you know, after this, like, you know, 15 years of like TV shows in Taiwan, what is like the coolest thing you have experienced? This must be like the coolest thing ever, or is there anything else that is like even cooler? Oh, there's a lot. Um... Okay, sorry. <laughs> TV, TV show budgets are a little bit different than YouTube budgets, I guess. I had to check if a cow was pregnant one year. Because cows are so big, you have to wear a whole glove on your arm. With the ultrasound in your hand, you got to go in through the butt and look for the baby. And um, turns out it was a male cow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's my joke right there. I tell that every time. Um... I wanted to just back up a little bit, like from when you first arrived here to Taiwan. Hopefully there are some other foreigners who maybe are dreaming about coming to Taiwan, living the, the Justin TV show uh, life. Do you have any tips or, or advice? Like what do you think foreigners should know before coming to Taiwan? Chinese. If you want to do TV, definitely learn Chinese. Not only helps with TV, but it also helps with the culture and the language barriers. When I first got here, it was really hard to make friends. And I thought like, oh, this is because of what I look like? Is my nose too big or you know, my eyes too blue? What's going on? And it just turns out, you know, people might not be that confident with English. But once you learn Chinese, man, once you learn their language, everything opens up. And you have to drop all your conceptions, all your, you know, what you thought Taiwan is going to be like, you know, just go in with a blank slate and just soak up as much information as you can. And you, you will slowly become Taiwanese. Uh, obviously, I can tell you're like you're all in of, of all different kinds of Taiwanese culture. Yeah. Maybe a sensitive uh, question here now, but which uh, tribe has the best food? The Amis. <laughs> the Amis. The yeah. Amis. Okay. I'd have to say the Amis. <laughs> I've I've had the other tribes. I enjoy their food, but still, my my taste buds and my heart always goes back to the Amis. They got this. Um, it's called Anadu. It's but it's made into like a mush and it's um, treated with salt and what I like to do is get some like a baguette cut it up toast it put some on top <laughs> so what's what's next how does uh, 2024 look for for Justin what's any big projects or uh... so uh, I'm seeing what I could do with the the Hakka language mm -hmm. you know I've already gotten to a singing competition so I I don't know if I'll win but um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, that's a good, uh, well, it's my, a good level already. <clears throat> my, my idea is, like, I want them to know who I am. I want them to know that I speak Hakka. Even if I just get on there for one episode, people are going to know who you are. It's all about, um, it's about pushing yourself out there, letting mm. people know who you are. So what, what, one of my, my favorite quotes is, fake it till you make it. I think that's a big part of my career here. Because now, Irfan Chang is not, like, uh, right, here anymore. Fair. 
what is like your your most regular uh, appearances? Where can we like see you like most likely see you this year? Well, we still do like a uh, 同学来了 and we hello, 你有事吗 Still doing shows there.、So, uh, we're we're in talks with three TV shows right now. One with the Aboriginal TV station、mm. and、uh, some with Gong、uh, Shi. And、um, yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes. Hopefully this year we can get some more、um, travel shows going on. Travel shows my forte. I love a travel show.、Mm. Normally I end with my my videos with saying like please go and、uh, follow today's guest, but you just said that you don't really reply or watch your social media. Can people still like follow you on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram? And、uh, you promise there will be more updates on 2024. Yes, there will be more updates 2024.、Um, I'm working on it. Click like, subscribe, hit that bell, notifications, turn them on. Oh, there we go. You're a professional YouTuber after all. That's please, all, please that's subscribe. All please. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas.、It、starts with L, as in like. Ends with S, as in subscribe. Please do both, and see you all in the next one.